it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday around lunchtime. I finished up some some of my work. I shipped my um, my items, and now I'm gonna do this quick little video for you. Before that, I want to show you what I'm wearing. I'm wearing my favorite sweater. Shopping is my cardio. Isn't that freaking awesome? Everyone loves that sweater, especially me. And I'm kind of going for this preppy look today with this shirt and my little tweed skirt. Oops, I just knocked over the heater and boots. So today we're going to talk about uh, Poshmark hints and tips. Now granted, if you've heard enough of that because there's a gazillion videos and a million blogs, go ahead and skip it. But for those that want to kind of get some new ideas on what to do, stay tuned. I'll, I'll share some nifty little hints for you. Um, and I'm sorry you've heard them before. You're just going to have to get over it. This is all I've got. Someone's in the office. That sounded weird. I thought someone was crying. Anyway. So I'm going to start by talking about what is your reach? What is your current reach in your closet? So when you share currently, when you share, look, look at the number of followers you have and identify your reach. So for example, I have around 10,000 followers. So my reach currently is 10,000, right? Now, what could be my potential reach? It could be in hundreds of thousands. So I still have a lot of work to do. Now, consider this. If you have 10,000 followers today and you follow someone today that has 5,000 followers, how much is that going to get you? So if they share your stuff, you could potentially reach 15,000 followers. So that's, yeah not that great. But what if you started following today a hundred people who have at least a hundred thousand followers. Just imagine that a hundred thousand followers and they share your stuff. We're talking about like a million, a potential of having a million people reached. So always focus on the big picture when selecting who to follow. You might follow a lot of people just because they shared your stuff or because they're your friend or you found them in the discussion group. But when you're hunting to follow people, find, find the ones that will strategically get you more exposure, okay? Don't look for the people that have 5,000K followers. And it's awesome that they share a lot. You know, that could be another reason you might want them because they share a lot. But focus on following the people that have many, many followers. And second of all, once you identify them, actually look and see, do they share? What if they have a lot of followers, but they really don't share? Well, then I don't care. If you don't share, I don't care. So, you know, from a strategic standpoint, it doesn't make sense really to do a lot for them. But if you find someone that has a huge ass closet and you're like, how the hell do I get their attention? How do I make sure that they follow me and they share my stuff to all of their big number of followers? Just share bomb them. So, rather than sharing one or two items, like share 20 items and leave them a nice comment. Say, wow, you have an amazing closet or just do hashtag closet crush. That will get their attention and then they will follow you. And if they share your stuff, now they're reaching all of these people. So kind of always think of the big picture when you're hunting for new followers. How many people do they have and how much do they share? All right. Um, the three, five rule. Have you guys ever heard of the three, five rule? If you belong to any of the Poshmark, uh, groups on Facebook, you probably have heard it mentioned. This gal, I forget her name right now, but all the credit goes to her. She, she designed this three, five rule. 
and it's very very simple and it's it might be overwhelming when you first hear it but just remember it really teaches you to have a um, kind of a tactical plan a a cadence of how you manage your closet so um, the cadence she developed the three five rule is to have three to five new posts per day so you need to kind of be up on the feeds and be adding and be constantly current and be active on Poshmark. So three to five new posts a day. Um, to follow 300 to 500 new individuals a day. To share your own closet three to five times a day. And I'm gonna add um, to that to share during peak hours. Don't share just to share, it's annoying. Um, Focus on peak hours and focus on um, variety of things, not the same stuff over and over. Because we people who follow you, we don't want to see your same, you know, 10 items constantly populating our feed. Give us variety and be a little strategic. And then share other people's closets. The rule is three, 300 to 500 shares a day and target the right closets. To go after the people that have a lot of followers, the people that will share back. Be very strategic and also share things that you really like. Don't share things just to share or share because someone else shared your stuff. If you go into their closet and you don't see anything you like, you're not obligated. Yes, you might have that, that little guy, the obligation angel here sitting. Oh, they shared. you got to share back. Oh, you got to share back. Well, well, what kind of person are you if you don't share back? Listen to him, the other guy on your shoulder saying, yeah, your followers are probably not going to want to see this because this is not your style, not what they're accustomed to you putting in your closet and not what they're accustomed to you liking listen to that little devil guy next um, so that's the three fiber rule okay try it for a week and see what happens it, it, like i said it might be overwhelming because that's a lot of activity activity but try it especially if you're a new posher um, you have to have some type of a strategy to get yourself up to a certain level try that get yourself on a schedule all right uh, let's talk about uh, just customer service. Tips on being successful is to providing is to provide excellent customer service, and that entails responding back to questions in a timely manner, being friendly to those um, who come into your closet and leave you a note. Um, uh, providing great customer service once the order has shipped. Um, I, I really appreciate when someone keeps me in the loop on, um, on what's going on. So, for example, one time um, a order kind of took a long time because it was coming from the East Coast and there were weather-related delays. And my seller, the seller whom I bought from, said, I see your order is on the way. Um, it, there is a delay because of the storms, so I, you know, hope it gets to you within two days. Um, best of luck to you, blah, blah, blah. Like, they just showed that they care, and that meant a lot to me. I'm like, oh man, if I buy again, I'm going to want to buy from someone who's caring and attentive and is worried about my order getting to me in a timely manner. Those little tidbits really matter, especially as it relates to customer retention. You really want to um, focus on customer service to those that bought from you and bought from you again. You want to retain those people. It is better to sell um, and work with people who know you, who've bought from you before, than you know, a brand new person off the street who's just trying to buy from you. Make sure you hone in on them and you have a list of all of them that bought from you and you share things from their closet so that they see not only is she a great seller, she's supporting me in my closet and what I'm trying to do. So that establishes a really good 
um, relationship. So just, yeah, ha have a list of all those people that bought from you. Um, on your phone, you have, if you have an iPhone, you have a notes uh, app. So as soon as someone buys from you, grab their closet name and stick it on that list. That list will get bigger and bigger. And when you go to share, start with your, you know, with people that bought from you. Share their stuff. All right. Oh, I can talk about that forever. Next. Uh, so that was customer service. Be nice. Be courteous. Shower people with sugar and honey. No vinegar. And people will get on your nerves. There's going to be some people. And I have pet peeves too. Like you, the use of excessive exclamation marks. Like trade. Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. I'm like, are you yelling at me? Like, what is that? Um, what else is there? Or just like no salutation. Like they just come into the closet and say, uh, if you increase, if you do shipping, and this is on Mercari, if you do shipping, I'll buy it right now. Like, no, then don't buy it. Just don't buy it, you know? So I, I have pet peeves too, but I learned that my reaction will determine my outcome. So if my reaction will be poor to this individual, the result will be poor. And it's going to come back in and hurt me, even if they're a mean person. But if you shower them with sweetness and sugar and compliment them, it's hard for a person to be rude and mean and, you know, screw you if you're extremely supportive and complimentary and appreciative. So remember that, even when they piss you off. All right. Parties. Be a party animal. That's my hint um, for you um, if you are trying to grow your closet. Be a party animal. Know about the parties. Attend the parties. Share your stuff to the parties. And share other people's stuff to the parties. Um, it's, it's important that you, um, that you get to a place where you establish kind of a schedule and know which parties you want to come to. Um, and always remember, when you share your own stuff to the people that follow you, 10K reach, right? It reaches that. But when you share to a party, now you're reaching thousands and thousands of more people. So that's another way to get followers. Um, if you're really, really uh, trying real hard to brown nose, leave a note for people that had a host pick and tell them, oh, I'm so happy. Congratulations on your host pick. I hope it sells soon and I'm going to share it several times to help you. I mean, that type of stuff goes a long way. When people leave me a note, when I get a host pick, I always follow them back and I look for stuff to share in their closet. It's just that reciprocation. It um, it just means a lot when someone spends their precious time uh, to help you. All right, showrooms. A lot of people still don't utilize showrooms to their advantage, and it's important you do. I gotta grab my phone. Showrooms change frequently, and showrooms are also a place where a lot of people who are shopping go to and scan what current uh, showrooms are. Um, available. Once you learn what the showrooms are, the first ones that are being displayed, let's see, I'll show you. Once you see what they are, then share things so that they appear at the top of the showroom um, that's currently displaying. So for example, right now the showroom that's um, the first one in our app is New J. Crew Accessories. So if you have any new J. Crew accessories, share now there because when people press this and go in there, your stuff should be up there. You should be in the top. They should be looking at your stuff. That's another way of getting people to come into your closet. A second showroom is new dainty necklaces under $25. If you have any of those, stick them in there. Ah, new scarves under $25 display it into that room. So be mindful of these showrooms. They're really important. All right. Showrooms, uh, parties. I talked about that. Sharing. Let's talk about sharing. 
sharing is caring but let's talk about strategic sharing and we started to at the beginning of this video by talking about you know who to follow and whose stuff to share but to me there's like three types of sharing there's just just sharing when you go into your feed and you see cute stuff share you see a new Zara Jack share so there's the just sharing then there's the return sharing so people people share your stuff you share back and then there's the focused sharing the strategic sharing and that's where I want to spend some time because there's a lot you can do with that granted it takes time but imagine this you have a lot of Eileen Fisher in your closet that you want to share what if you went and you looked up all of the people that have sold Eileen Fisher items in the last 30 days and you looked up and you found people that bought that stuff and were interested in that stuff based on the comments or the love notes of that seller's uh, closet. So you know when you can you can look up a uh, Poshmark, uh, um, a Poshers account, you can go into their profile and you can see the love notes that were being left and all of the stuff that sold and you can find people that buy Eileen Fisher. And then if you went into their closet, followed them, and shared some of their stuff, they are going to be inclined to come over and check out who, who are you. You just share bombed me. Um, and they see all this Eileen Fisher stuff you have for sale. Ah! Hallelujah! We've got a match. So when I talk about focused sharing, that's what I'm talking about, is to strategically look for people that buy things that you have in your closet and trying to target them. Now, it gets annoying if you um, uh, tag people, but if, you're, but if it looks like that person is really looking for things and they have some ISO postings in search of, and it looks like they correspond a lot, it might not hurt them. Um, I know some people are going, no, do not ever tag me. Y you can give it a try one time. If it offends them, don't do it again. Um, but you can see who are shoppers and who, who, oh my God, that scared me. Oh, somebody hit the door. Um, who are shoppers and who are buyers? Obviously, you can tell, right? How many things do they have listed, how many love notes they've given, if they only have five things in their closet but they're following like 500,000 people and they've given over a hundred love notes. They're a shopper. They are a shopper. And so they, they are the ones you want to target. Um, and then they're just sellers. You can quickly identify a person who is just a seller and they're not going to be shopping in your closet. Those are the people that have given like five, uh, love notes and they have a gazillion followers and they don't follow many people and they don't share they're just sellers so kind of create a profile in your head of that person that um, you're looking into their closet what are they shopper buyer are they a sharer not share what do they carry and eliminate those that have no chance at you being successful by um, you know by sharing and following and all of that all right, joining discussion groups. I highly recommend that you go on Facebook and you join all the Poshmark discussion groups. That, has, that is probably like half of where my, um, uh, where my followers came from. I started to, um, a long time ago, I joined the Poshmark uh, Facebook group. It's the, hold on, let me make sure I give you the right, the right name. The Poshmark, best tips and I'll put it in my video below um, they very often uh, someone will come into the closet and do a come into the group and do a posting hey I'm looking for some shares uh, tag your closet down below and then you'll get like 40 50 comments and links to people's closets so I've always taken advantage of those those are the people that are looking to grow their closets and share so you identify all of them, you go in and you can get a lot of followers with that. Also, um, 
I love those discussion groups because when you have a problem, a question, a dilemma, you can post and quickly all these women are there to help you and they will respond with recommendations. Even if you're having a shitty day and you're like, man, I haven't had any sales and this woman gave me a three-star review, all your posh sisters will be in there to help you to pick you up and chances are they're going to be like, hey, what's your closet name again? And they're going to go and give you some love to pick you up. So those groups are very, very um, special to me. And if you're not in any, you should be. Let's see, what else did I write on my little cheat sheet? Expanding, blah, 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 following, read Poshmark blogs, um, groups, party showrooms, just engagement, maintaining people's engagement, um, strategically sharing and following. Hmm, let me think. Hey, so... Like I covered the community um, aspect of it and the sharing and following. So now let's talk about your closet and things you can do um, to be an attractive closet to follow and share. So, and this is just my opinion. You may not agree with this, but um, let's see. Remain compliant. That's a no brainer. Don't be selling things that are not eligible, people are not supportive of that, and people will not want to find host picks um, for the parties in your closet. They're not gonna wanna share your stuff, just you're like, stay away from that. Um, be, be creative, be creative because some postings are really boring and they're like taken laying on the bed on crinkled up sheets and that's not attractive so be creative get like a hang a sheet on the wall and stick a nail in it and hang all your stuff there let that be your cover photo just just do something that will make things look attractive not that they were laying down on the floor you picked them up put them on the bed it's just gross people don't want to see that or just like uh, lay everything in the bathroom floor I saw one time a posting for a free people sweatshirt, like a cardigan with a hood, and I liked it, the price was right, but the picture was taken in the bathroom and there were some pubes in the corner and I was like, are you kidding me? I'm never buying this now. So just consider what you're projecting to the world when you're taking your cover photo. It's important, um, so be tidy, clean, and. Uh, don't have a bunch of junk laying everywhere. I don't know. Just be tidy and clean. Be creative in how you're doing your cover photo. There's also a case for consistency. People like um, when others have a, a closet that has a signature type of consistent um, uh, cover photo. So, for example, um, well... I can't say I have that much consistency, but I use my white wall, uh, my white kind of wood wall thing, and it looks nice so people can come in and just quickly see the item and they're not distracted by all the other crap that you could potentially put in there. And that consistency is nice, and if you have nice things constantly posted a certain way, it seems that is more appealing uh, to shoppers. Also, from a creativity standpoint, um, do something, do something that has a signature for you. Uh, I don't have that yet. I haven't figured it out, but check out Nicole State. So when Nicole State started Poshmark, she uses like this furry, um, furry uh, uh, rug, and she does flat lace, and she puts it on the rug, and she has like this, um, oh, what are those called? Like a tea carrier thing, uh, whatever, like this glass, nice, uh, uh, God, I don't know what it's called, me and getting things, getting name for things. Well, just check out her closet. And so as soon as I see that, I know, oh, it's Nicole State. She has this signature look for it. And that's awesome. But just be mindful that if you put too much shit in the picture, it just distracts away from the item that you are selling. Um, I know they sometimes they look beautiful when you have like roses and pearls and 
antiques and blah, that's great, but just don't distract too much from the item that you're selling. In your descriptions, be very clear. If you're going to write a story, try to make bullet points. I know some people write these long descriptions and I'm just like trying to get to the main thing. So get in a habit or create a template for, um, for what you want to list on each item. So consider the fact that size is already included. So only comment on size if it's oversized, if it runs small, um, if there's something out of the ordinary. But always put the same stuff. Size information, measurements. Uh, when, when you're providing measurements of tops, length and bust are the main ones you want to focus on. So try to include those. That will result in less questions later. So bust and length. Skirts, waist and length. Those are the two. Um, pants, inseam and waist. Those are the two. So just get in a habit of um, including that in there. It will help you uh, later down the line. And be also in the habit of including the fabric content. There's a lot of allergies. People are allergic to certain things. So um, include that in there. And don't forget to use your phone dictation thing. You're like, oh my God, this thing has so many items, so many different fabrics. How the heck am I going to list all of them? So go into your thing, press your, um, press your microphone icon and be like 45% viscose, 40% nylon, 15% angora rabbit hair, and just let it all be written for you. It's awesome. You can do it. Then if there's room at the bottom, uh, personalize it by saying, hey, I wore this to my bar mitzvah, blah, 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 blah. Um, people like that personalized aspect. People like knowing what, how you used the item. Um, it just makes it more relatable. And just personalize it. Make it inviting and inform them if there's any unique background about the item. I find that that um, helps and I've read many, many blogs that people really do believe uh, that that's a way to retain customers is so that they get to know you through your postings. They'll come back to you um, because they now are connected to you in some way. So let's see. Um, so that's about your, your postings. I'm sure we can get further into um, the types of pictures. Like for example, you all know we have four pictures available. So the first is the cover photo. You clearly want to display the item that you're sharing. The second item that I have generally is the back of the item, right? So front, back. Third picture will be a um, focused in um, a picture of anything unique on the clothing item and the tag. I always take a picture of the brand name tag. Um, I don't know why. It's just habit. I like it when I I can see it, um, you know, there's questions about authenticity once in a while or whatever. So I always like to see the tag, make sure it's legit. And then my last picture is always, um, not always, but uh, the mannequin wearing the item or, or me wearing the item, but styling it. So front, back, focus, detail, and um, uh, a mannequin modeling the item. Now. If there are stock photos, use them. Make a little collage, or if there's a lot you don't to do with them, do a collage. I know four pictures is sometimes not enough, but collages are okay to do. So make a collage to display um, the information. I love finding stock photos, and stock photos are, you know, on some brands they're so easy to find. Madewell and J. Crew, they all have the style number. White House Black Market, they always have a style number. So you can look things up quickly and, and grab it. Once you finalize your posting and you're ready to um, share it, don't forget to look at the social media um, uh, things you can click on and share too. 
Um, if you're not doing Pinterest right now, you're missing out. So right now even Poshmark is running a promotion that if you begin sharing using Pinterest, you'll be entered into a $100 credit, shopping credit, uh, giveaway. So you're crazy if you're not taking advantage of that. Stop this video right now. 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 And go and sign up. Link your Pinterest to your, um, uh, to your app. And if you haven't already, do the same thing for Facebook. No reason for you not to be linked. If you want to attract more customers and create more engagement, you know what to do. In addition to um, Pinterest, create a Instagram account for your closet. Um, there is so many people on there. If you if you study social media um, stats and trends, you know Instagram is the fastest growing social media platform out there, and they are reaching many many new people and you want to go where the people are. So focus on Instagram as well as Pinterest and use a lot of hashtag hashtags. So for example, um, if you post a um, pair of, let's say you're posting like a free people sweater coat. So hashtag free people, hashtag boho, hashtag bohemian, hashtag uh, sweaters, hashtag cozy hashtag style, hashtag fashion, hashtag anthropology, like hashtag the shit out of that thing and you'll reach a lot of people. And in your posting, make sure that you have a link back to your um, closet so people can come shopping. And if they're brand new um, to Poshmark, leave your code so they can sign up using your code so you can get credit. Um, Start today if you if you aren't doing that. It's 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 a big deal. Make sure you're doing it. Okay, so that's that for my Poshmark tips. This is what I do, and hopefully maybe there's one little nugget um, you can take away from that. <clears throat> now, one last discussion I wanted to have, and that's uh, my wish list for Poshmark app enhancements. I mean, doesn't everyone have one? Do you have one? Um, there are so many things I wish they could do more of. Um, I do like the recent update where you can just hold the item um, for a little longer and it prompts you to share versus you having to go in there, scroll, find the share button and then share. So I really like that. That made it quicker. I don't think they'll ever get to a point where you can share multiple items at the same time because that's just going to defeat the entire purpose. But I do appreciate anything that saves me clicks. Now, let's put on your futuristic uh, hat on. Wouldn't it be awesome if like Siri became more Poshmark intelligent and so you can create postings by just talking to her and be like, hey Siri, um, you've got three pictures in my photo album for this shirt. Can you create a posting? And she'll be like, yes, Anna, let me get that for you right now. Oh, I see that it is free people. It's a size small. Do you want me to put all that in there? I'll be like, yes, Siri, anything you find, all the facts, the description, just put it all in there. Anna. The posting is ready. May I have your approval to post? I'd be like, heck yeah! Well, what about the price? How did you price the item? I found the most comparable uh, postings in eBay, Mercari, Poshmark, blah 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 blah, and I took the average of all those and create the, created the price. Does it meet your approval? Like, bitch, hell yeah! You gotta do all this for me! Wouldn't that be awesome? Oh my god, I, that would be so awesome. And then let's look at even further and further into the future. This is like 50 years from now. Now Siri's talking, walking, and you're like, Siri, see that death pile over there? You know, the drill. She'll be like, Anna, how many do you want me to do? Do all of them, girl. We're going to go shopping tomorrow. 
That's the future. That's the future. Okay, anyway, funny side aside, uh, the, the things I wish that Poshmark had was more analytics for the sellers. So I would like to have the capacity to go in and identify who are the people that share the most in my closet, who share, share my stuff the most, and calculated the anticipated reach so that I can manage to that. So if I feel on any given day on average I'm reaching um, uh, let's say 500,000, I might be happy with that. Or if I'm only reaching on average 15,000, I'm not going to be happy to on that. So same thing as Twitter. In Twitter analytics you're able to see uh, the imprints and your reach. So I would like to have that type of granular um, uh, analytic information available to me. I want to see that. I also want to see my statistics on my likes. I want to be able to sort my closet in, in order of what are the most liked items and you know why. Do you? Because the stuff that has the most likes is the stuff that you can totally target for uh, sales and decreases. So if if you don't ever decrease the price of zero the, of items that have zero likes, that's not going to drive any traffic into your closet. So take the stuff that has like 80 likes and drop it down by two or three dollars. Now you have the potential of 80 people dropping by your closet to see what else you're discounting. So having that type of information would be so helpful. So yeah, the likes and which person has the most uh, likes in your closet. So let's say you have someone that actually likes 50 items in your closet. And you're like, wow, that, that's the person's size, that's their style. You can do a targeted uh, sale and approach that person and say, um, I saw that you have 50 likes in my closet. I would love to create a bundle for you and give you a big discount. Uh, would you like to work with me on that today? Or set a time when we can do that together? Like how awesome would be that? Uh, how awesome would that be? So empowering to have that information. So yeah, hearts, likes, um, you can manage, you know, when was the last time you um, priced, dropped on the things. I would love to have that. Just even if it's in Excel, even if Poshmark sent you a data dump in Excel once a month, I'd play around with that and slice it, dice it until I get the information I need to be more laser focused, to be more surgical in the activities that I need to do um, to make my closet successful. So that's my wish list, a uh, wish list item. Another wish list item is um, for the photos to have editing capabilities. I start all of my postings in Mercari and because they have the ability to cut, crop, add text, uh, adjust colors, you know, give, make, give it more light in case it's dark, they have all of that ability. So I start in Mercari, I get my pictures the way I want them, and then I transfer it over to Poshmark. And then you have to do it in the right order. I wish Poshmark had the ability for you to switch order of pictures. So let's say for a month you're displaying this as a cover photo. Next month you might switch it around and use another one as a cover photo. You don't have that ability today. Let's see. Another item. So the pictures. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that was my last one. When people buy from you and they are now a client of yours, I wish there was a little indicator or their name was in a different color um, letting you know that this person bought from you before. So if they come back to your closet and they share, you're like, oh, that's the person that bought from me before. I got to make sure to share back because you want to focus on those people that are your customers. So wouldn't that be cool? Plus, if they send you an offer, you're like, ah, it's too low. But if you knew it was a past client, um, you might want to play around with that a little bit more. Customer retention is important and you want to deliver even better, um, even better uh, pricing to uh, the ones that have bought from you before. So those are some of my wish list items. I will probably come up with more, 
next time we talk about this I'll have a new list of items uh, oh and maybe the shipping okay so I do wish they had shipping segmentation just like on that's weird that's a video anyway I'm using the the light on my camera because my face is all dark without it so I try to light myself up you know look all whatever I just I'm so puffy today I woke up I okay I ate three pickles yesterday and I woke up and I was like several pounds up I'm touching my skin I'm looking at my face I was swollen like a whale I could barely fit my calves into my boots and I already wear uh, wide calf anyway um, what was I saying oh yeah pricing uh, uh, shipping segmentation so I don't think the people that sell an item, a small set of earrings, should be subsidizing the cost of shipping of all those people who sell big bulky boxes. I mean, have like two price points, like maybe $2.95 for the someone who's selling earrings or a light scarf versus the people that are sending a three pound box of stuff or a four pound box of stuff. There should be some segmentation, you know what I mean? So if you have any wish lists, uh, wish list items for Poshmark, please leave me notes. What if we like compile this list and all of us do a campaign one month and send that stuff constantly to them? Maybe it'll prompt them to actually do something about it. Do like a focused upgrade recommendations campaign. That would be so awesome, you guys. Oh my God. Because they don't know our world. They don't know all the things we need. They're not, I guess few of the girls sell, but if you look at their closets, they don't, se um, they don't sell in volume. So us people that have like hundreds of items listed, this is the stuff that we need in order to be successful. And so if we share that with them, I think it would go a long way. If not, it'll at least be fun. All right, you guys, greetings and salutations. Thank you for listening. Tomorrow I am going to hit um, some of my spots and get some inventory, so I'll do a haul video. Uh, so come back tomorrow, and if you like this video, hit like. And if you're not following me already, please subscribe. I'm so excited I have so many people subscribing. Like, that totally puts on the pressure to deliver more con content. I'm so excited. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Greetings and salutations. Love you all. Bye!